Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jupiter James, where I do what I want, when I want, and today I want to get into astrology. More specifically, my in-depth analysis on the rising signs, and today we're going to get to Gemini. Gemini is the mercurial, mental, communicative sign of our zodiac, and let's talk about what happens when it becomes our rising sign. Now, before we get into the rising sign, I just want to express that this is my favorite series because the rising sign is the most important in my opinion. I don't do sun sign astrology or I don't really care about the sun sign. Whenever I'm at a party or a club or when I'm just out meeting new people, I'm never like, oh my God, what's your sun sign? What's your moon sign? I want to know what your rising sign is because your rising sign is the most important. It dictates where the person is going in their life. It dictates the scope of their career. It dictates the people that they attract, their marriage life. It, it, dictates their home life and their private life and also their childhood and their mother like if you really 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 want to know a person and predict where they are going to be and who they're going to marry you have to ask what is their rising sign and that is because the rising sign dictates the 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 makeup of the birth chart everyone's birth chart is going to be different depending on the rising sign it's never the sun sign or the moon sign that dictates the birth chart what dictates the birth chart is the rising sign. And you know, with Gemini in the first house, it dictates what's gonna be in the second house, what's gonna be in the third house, what's gonna be in the fourth house. And this is how you predict where the person is gonna end up in life or what they're gonna attract and what they're gonna achieve and what their their life is gonna be like, you know? So that's why me being an astrologer, I just love the rising sign. So let's get into it. So with Gemini in the first house, this is gonna make for a very cerebral person. This person is gonna need a lot of stimulation. And this person, whenever you ask how they met this person, like so say you met a friend that had a Gemini rising, or you met, yeah, or yeah, you met a friend that was a Gemini rising, you'd say, oh, I remember I met you, and the first time I saw you, you were talking, you were going around and you were at this group, that group, that group, and you were the one talking a lot. You were the one communicating a lot. Um, you were the most social one in the group talking and communicating or at the party. That is going to be what the initial impression of a Gemini rising is going to give is very just talking. They are going to be the one talking or flitting about and running around talking to this group, that group, this group, that group, asking this group if they're okay, getting information from that group. And that is what the first impression of someone with Mercury in the first house or Gemini rising is going to give and exude. They're gonna give this quality of just like, they are the chatty one in the bunch. They're the one that's the most social, getting the secrets, getting the scoop, relaying the scoop, you know, they are that. They are ruled by what I like to believe is Hermes, the, the, god of the messenger the messenger of the gods the one with the winged shoes who was like flitting about right this one was always whenever you saw that winged shoe god he was here he was there he was here he was there he was going he was scribing he was off he was that's what mercury is mercury is a very it needs stimulation and it's quick it's 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 flitty it's like it needs to be here and there and everywhere now this person also is going to have you know, kind of like two sides to them. You know, they're gonna be very social, but they're also have that little mischievous side to them. You know, Gemini is known to be ruled by the twins and they're known to be very dual. And they are kind of like Libra in a way where they can kind of exude both sides of the coin. They're very sweet. They're like Sour Patch Kids. They're sweet, but they're also sour. They're they're cute, but they're bad. You know, they're, they they, and that's how they, I don't know, they're just mentally stimulated by being both sides of the coin. Now, with um, Gemini being the first house, that's how that's going to be and that's going to be the impression that you give the world. Now with your second house, your second house is going to be ruled by Cancer. And so with Cancer being in your second house, this is going to be how you make your money. This is also going to be um, what is important to you and what is valuable to you. And so I'd say that with second house being in Cancer, this is going to be someone who you know, as a Gemini rising, you are going to value being very emotionally nurturing to people or supportive to others. I have a Gemini rising friend and she is in the, the um, event planning business where she plans events for different 
people and different businesses. And so she essentially makes her money by being a support system to the plans of others, right? It's like, oh my God, okay, you got a plan to like host a, an event and, and help me welcome others. That's what she does. She welcomes others to a space and to a, an event and throws those, these parties that people can go to. And so that's what cancer is. It's making people feel at home. And so what she does is essentially plans events that makes people feel welcome and she helps support others' visions and what their parties and what their events need to be. So that is kind of how and what the flavor of your second house will be is that you value emotional stability and emotional comfort and you also value helping others achieve a goal or being in support of others. That's how you make your money is, is you know, and, and think about it, like being a Gemini rising you are the one to carry information from one point to another or from one person to another. And that right there is being in support of this party to that party, right? You're bringing two parties together or you're bringing this venture to that venture. And like that's in support of, that's you being a caretaker, right? That's cancer, second house. So with um, third house, Leo, with third Leo in your third house, this is gonna make for a person who you know, again, your birth chart reads a story. If you read your birth chart like a book, you'll start to understand why people see you as what they see you as in your first house. You know, every house relates to the first house or the house before it. And so if you have Leo in the third house, the house of your speech and your communicative faculties and your talkative natures and what you think with Leo being the sign of expressiveness and boldness, you're gonna be the one talking. You're the, gonna be the one always chatting. You're gonna be the one always saying what's on your mind. And look at that, it relates back to your first house of being the person who's always talking. You see, like, you, it's something that you can't hide. With Wherever Leo is, that's the sun. And so the sun can't hide. And so the sun is lighting up your, your speaking faculties you know it's lighting up your communicate your communication <laughs> your communication faculties and so you're going to be the one talking that people always see talking aka gemini rising so now with um the fourth house being in virgo what this is going to be is that you probably in your private life want to serve people in your private life. You probably in your private life get off on serving and helping others and being of service to others or being like a secretary to others in your private life. And also your home is probably very put together, very nice, very neat and orderly. And you probably serve people from your home. You probably grew up in a household where your mother was the same way, where she was very supportive and like she wanted to serve the household and probably used her home to serve others like maybe she opened a soup kitchen or she was someone who would take care of people from her home in some way shape or form your home or your home life your mother had qualities of service to others in some way like whether it be your mom just probably serve you you know like that could be that and now in your adult life you're the same way you want to um serve others and help others and nurture others and yeah so now with fifth house in libra libra in the fifth house is going to make for a person who you know what's what's fun for you is going to be um beautifying things and making decorating things um you know putting things together organizing things and like um, making things warm and welcoming and cute and like cuddly and like awesome, you know, like, and you also are probably someone who like on a date, you, you seek fairness. You want people to see you on an equal footing and on an equal stage, if that makes sense. Like you want equal footing. Like, so say you went to a, say you went on a date and you got a steak. It's like, you're going to want that person next to you to have a steak. You're going to want the person across from you to have a stake, you know, like you're not going to like inequalities when it comes to your dating. You're going to want fairness and you're going to want harmony when it comes to your dating life. And you will probably, um, you'll probably attract people who are fair and who want to be fair, you know, and who are very aesthetically 
pleasing and, and aesthetically beautiful. Now, moving on to your sixth house. Your sixth house is gonna be in Scorpio. So with Scorpio in your sixth house, you are gonna be someone who, you know, on in your day-to-day, -day, you're probably very secretive. You are probably a recluse or you retreat um, in some shape or another. Like you are very emotionally tied to your schedules. You're emotionally tied to the things you gotta do during the day and you probably won't relinquish control very easily on the schedules that you have. Like, so if someone were to be like, oh, take off work, do this with me, or, and you'd be like, no, I gotta stick to my schedule. Like you're very emotionally attached to the things that are going on in your day to day. And you can't separate yourself from it. Like it's like, it's very deep for you. It's a very deep thing for you. Now, with um, your seventh house in Sagittarius, this is gonna be someone who, you know, you like people from different cultures, you like people from different lands, or you're gonna just like people who are very philosophical and that tell the truth. You, this is, you being a Gemini rising is what's gonna stimulate you the best, is gonna be someone that can teach you things. And who better than to teach you things than from people who are not, who don't look like you and who are not from where you are from and who are from different places and different cultures. This is gonna be the perfect balance to you because for you, you love to gather information and Sagittarius energy loves to give information. So even though you may not attract a Sagittarius, you might attract someone with big Sagittarius energy as far as maybe they are a foreigner, they are not from the country or the town that you are from, they are from a different race, they are going to be someone who loves to talk about philosophy or knowledge in some way, shape or form and they just love to chat and so with you that's going to keep you stimulate, stimul that's going to keep you stimulated, you know, that's going to keep you um, mentally stimulated enough for you to take that person seriously because you as a Gemini rising you need a lot a lot of stimulation and again who better than to capture your interest than a love interest who is not from where you are from and who every day you are learning something new from every day you're like wow I didn't know that about you or wow I didn't know that that's what you is something in your culture and something that you do or like you, you know what I'm saying like wow that's something that you you grew up with doing in your culture wow tell me more see like that is going to keep you forever like learning something new from your partner now your jobs will also require you to be on your feet a lot your job is going to require you to travel your job and the the contracts that you sign are also going to make you travel a lot because Sagittarius is a very move about sign it's a move about energy so yeah now with um your eighth house in Capricorn Capricorn is ruled by Saturn and wherever I see Capricorn this just means that you know you gotta work very hard at it to be successful at it it's not saying you won't be successful at it it's saying you will be successful at it if you work hard at it and this just so happens to be in the realm of your intimacy and your deep soul bonds and your sex and your your bedroom pleasures and so for you you are probably very like finicky in the bedroom you're probably someone who's like oh this scares me a little bit or oh I don't want to be that deep I don't want to get that deep like Gemini Gemini energy is known to be very surface not in a bad way just very like you want to keep things light you want to keep things easy but to get deep for someone to sit you down long enough which is probably very rare for you for someone to sit you down long enough and really 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 be like let me know who you are you're like oh, gotta go because that's not Gemini Gemini is very again it's very flitty and it's social and it's gotta go it's gotta go oh gotta go gotta go gotta go so it's this will get better for you your sex life will get better for you your sex life will get better for you and um, it'll get better for you once you're older you know um, wherever Capricorn energy is it just says it gets better with time and that will get better with time <laughs> so now with um what's the next one let's see so with your ninth house in Aquarius you are going to be someone who you know you probably love strange things you when you travel you travel on a whim like you just wake up one day and you're like I'm gonna go to LA uh, I'm going to Paris uh, uh, uh. like you're just you will travel on a whim your your college life was probably very um, sudden and very like quick um, 
And yeah, like you, what you believe in is probably also very strange to others or very weird to others. Like when people, when you tell people what you believe in, like you probably believe in aliens, you probably believe in like crazy stuff. Like you, like, and when you tell people this, they're like, huh, like you believe in what? Like, because Uranus is ruling the house of your higher beliefs and your higher philosophies and Uranus is already a very strange sign. So you just believe in strange shit. Like you, you really do like, and that's okay, you know, <laughs> like, how, if a Gemini was boring, a, a Gemini wouldn't be a Gemini. And this is making you a Gemini. You believing in weird stuff and telling people, oh my God, I believe in um, fairy tales and gumdrops. And and um, I think that we are, you know. <laughs> but anyway, um, so Pisces, Pisces in the 10th house, your career sector is going to be, it's going to make you a very creative person. Whatever you do in your job, it's going to make you be someone who has to do something with um, your career, like creativity. It could be film, art, acting, singing, um, interior design. Anything creative is what you're going to find yourself in, and what you're going to have to be, and who you're going to be seen as in your in your career, like in your career life. It's gonna have a creative flair to it in some way, shape, or form. And if it doesn't have a creative flair, it's gonna have some type of illusion or fantasy attached to it. Um, yeah. So now with 11th house and Aries, this is gonna be like you, yourself, you're gonna be like a one man kind of like ship, right? Where for you, you are gonna find community in your own way. It's gonna require you to be very bold, very brave, and be very brazen when you find the networks that you deem are important to you. And you're probably gonna have to just like command it. Like, hey, we're friends now. Like, hey, you're you're my person, you're my people, I love you, you're my friend. You know, like, it, it really has to be like that for you um, as, a, as a Gemini rising. But yeah. Now, your 12th house is Taurus, and so this means that the slow moving nature, the dependability, um, the stability that Taurus exudes is kind of lost on you. Like, you are not that. You are not someone that you really, it's not that you're not dependable. It's not that you can't sit still. It's not that you don't like to be patient. It's just that you'd rather not. That's not how you see to get things done. You'd rather just get things done the way you want to get things done. And so, um, yeah, that Taurus nature, that slow moving, quiet, oh, like I'll wait, let's just hang, let's just chill, let's just be lazy. That's not you, Gemini. So whenever something is in your 12th house, that just means that that's an energy in your life that you don't exude, that is lost on you, that is like, mm, that's boring. Like, I'm, I don't know what that is. So for you, that side of you is like cut off. Like, you're like lazy, sitting around, doing nothing, eating all day. Ew, no, I gotta be here, I gotta be there. I gotta talk to this person, I gotta be at and that will make sense because you're a Gemini rising. So yeah, that was my in-depth analysis on Gemini risings. Um, if you need a birth chart reading, a career, love, destiny reading, a karma reading, let me know. Hit my links below and I would love to give you guys a reading. Um, yeah, I'm sure the stars have a message and a solution for you and I would love to relay the message. Y'all have a good one and I'll see you on the next one, alright? Y'all have a great day. Bye.